this morning there were no hold-ups. The countdown proceeded well. First, the main engine lit. Then, some seven seconds later, the four strap-on boosters ignited, and in what looked like a ball of fire, Energia lifted off. But television coverage was poor. No pictures have been released yet of its ascent. In contrast, the landing was well covered. The mission was a remarkable feat, the more so because the landing was completely automatic. Soviet space engineers had rehearsed automatic landings more than 20 times, but this time the shuttle had to be slowed down from 25 times the speed of sound, brought back through the scorching heat of re-entry, and down to a gentle glide and pinpoint landing on a runway only as wide as a football field, all by computers. It's the start of a new era in the Soviet space program. Apart from the maiden flight of their shuttle, it was also only the second flight for their huge Energia rocket, which can carry more than a hundred tons into orbit. It's certainly the most uh, spectacular space mission that the Russians have flown since the launch of Yuri Gagarin in 1961. Simply because on this flight, the shuttle has been flown completely unmanned and in automatic mode. The Soviet shuttle, looking somewhat the worse for wear after its journey, seems remarkably like its American counterpart. A result of parallel evolution, it said.